This video is sponsored by Linode. Use the link in the description to get a $100 60 day credit. So with that, let's get into some of the uh, new applications and improvements. And down below, I'm gonna to link to their actual release notes and I'm just gonna be running through these step by step. And the first substantial update is within their free TV application. It is an IPTV viewer. And this is the application right here and you'll notice some uh, visual improvements. So if I go under TV channels, for example, there is much better dark mode support. And the thing is with their uh, new dark mode support, it seems like it's only in dark mode because I do have my system theming set to light mode. But one thing that makes this really nice is they added a search functionality. So I could do like sports, hit enter, and it should go ahead and search channels for sports. And we'll go to this all sports Brazil right here. And you can see it goes ahead and opens up a video feed with sports. Now I've been playing around with this for a little bit and I did notice that it pops up and doesn't play in this player. It's not a big deal, but that's just something I noticed when kind of going through this. This is in a beta. But by the time you're uh, watching this, this may be changed and the official version may be out. So I'm not sure if that's just uh, specific to that or what's going on there. And then the next thing we're going to look at is not a change, rather a addition that they've been teasing. They called it Thingy, but in reality, it's a, a application called Library that's been written in Python. Now, there's supposed to be previews here. I added a couple random PDFs off the Internet to go ahead and test this out and play with it, but for some reason it's not pulling the first pages right here. But this is pretty cool because it gives you a little uh, dialogue or a little uh, progress bar for how far you've read into the document. So if I open up one of these like this uh, economic outlook report, go ahead and scroll down near the end right here, close this out, you'll see the economic outlook report is almost completely read. And all these are just PDFs in my documents folder and it went ahead and pulled these up automatically. So this application is very simple, but it works and just anything like this is a welcome addition. Now the next application specific change has been within their sticky note application. So if I go ahead and open up notes, this is the application right here. And if we go ahead and create a new note, let's say we type something like my name. Uh, what you can do now is go ahead and search sticky notes. So if I go search, I could type in my name and it will go ahead and pull up that note. I only have one, but that search functionality is available. And then with EndNotes, the overall look has been improved by embedding these titles with EndNotes. So I'm going to disable search here, go over to the note, and I could go ahead and add the title, such as name. That is my name. <laughs> And now within these notes, you could actually change the size of the text. So right here, if I go right there, you could go small, normal, large, or larger text. And I do need to highlight this and go larger text. So that's just a little extra formatting options in addition to all these other general formatting options that we'd expect. So welcome improvement. And speaking of welcome improvements, one of the most welcome improvements is switching away from your current cloud hosting provider over to Linode, which happens to be the sponsor of today's video. Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider out there. I've been using them for uh, quite a while to host the front end of TechCut.tv, including my very own NextCloud instance game servers and things like that. And most of the things that I host, I've actually got set up and running using their one-click installer which these are basically scripts that do a lot of the heavy lifting for you when it comes to deploying whatever services you want to use. Overall, the service has been fantastic, wonderful customer support. And if you're a new customer, you might as well use the link in the description to get that $100 60 day credit to go ahead and try out the node today. So with that, Linux Mint also has gotten a lot of just general and simple UI improvements. One thing you may have already noticed is they've added some round corners within the Linux distribution. You can see it not on the bottom, but in the top title bars, the corners are now rounded and some of the buttons are a little bit bigger, just making the overall appeal and just visuals a little bit better. Uh, obviously, if your preference is different, you may disagree with this. Personally, I think this is a uh, very nice improvement. And then when it comes just to the general accent colors, they've gone with the philosophy that less is more. Uh, you can see if I highlight over this, instead of showing the accent color, it's uh, kind of a gray tint. And if I go to click on something, then we can see the accent color. And they've just toned this down a little bit because their general thoughts on this is the accent colors actually compete for your attention more than the actual content that you're supposed to be focusing on. 
So you'll notice throughout the system that they did replace accent colors with like this lighter shade of gray, but you'll notice things like sliders, checkbox, things that are actually selected will still have those accent colors. So that's one change. And one thing you'll notice, I do have light mode selected, but some of the applications will actually be shipping with the dark theme enabled by default. So if I open up a couple different applications, including the uh, TV application we opened up earlier, you can see some of these are light, some of these are dark. And you'll notice that they went with the dark with a lot of the multimedia applications, so that is something that has been changed. Now, I don't really have any files on the system at the moment that actually have embeds, except for maybe the star right here. But the mint Y icon theme has some pretty good looking new embeds. So you have like the green check, the little warning explanation point, just overall the icon themes are looking pretty good. Right now, if we jump into settings, so let's go into system settings under themes. Right now, the default is mint Y. If I change some of this over to mint X, you'll notice that the uh, toolbar in Nemo has slightly changed to a better, uh, Complement the Mint X theme. Personally, I prefer uh, Mint Y. Now, one thing that has changed, if we go down here, this is the calendar applet, and you'll notice there are currently no events, and events will now appear down here, so that is nice. So let's go ahead and create a little mock event real quick. So I went ahead and added an event here, so if we go down here to calendar, ooh, oh, I had, I had to click on the actual date. You'll see right here, uh, tomorrow at 1 p.m., supposedly there is a Christmas party, so that is nice. And this applet will also support online accounts. It uses the Evolution Data Server. So if you use something like the Google Online Accounts, this will automatically sync and be ready to go for you. And the, the, these are some of the more obvious things. Uh, like I said down below, I'm going to be linking to the full changelog. There has been a lot of just general minor improvements, settings, additions, and changes within both Linux Mint and their Cinnamon Desktop. So I do recommend you check that out. Just some general examples. The workspace switcher, notification applet, and the Windows list applet all have new options within their settings. If you're using NVIDIA Optimus, which is like the hybrid graphics, there's actually an option within the .desktop file to go ahead and prefer the non-dedicated GPU, things like that. There's been a lot of printing support additions. There's been some X app improvements. Uh, one thing, if you go into their web apps, so I'm gonna go over to web apps. Let's create a new one real quick. So we're creating techhut.tv. The icon's fine. Let's go ahead and hit OK. You can now see it lists the actual browser it's going to open up with, and you can change different websites to open up with different browsers. So for example, if for most things you want Firefox, but if you want to like open Outlook in Edge, that's an example of a Example for that in web apps, and you can easily now see which web browser each individual app is supposed to open up in. And web apps in Linux Mint is something that's really cool. So if I go ahead and open up this web app, it just opens up in a uh, more containerized window for this specific website and for things like email clients that you want on the internet or just general things. It depends on your use case. It's a very, very uh, useful tool. And of course, there has been some substantial... Uh, artwork additions. So if we go over here, go to the latest version, which is Una, I think is how you say it. All of these wallpapers are brand new. Uh, people, sometimes on these videos, people are like, why are you focusing on wallpapers? Well, people are really good photographers or they spend a lot of time to make a lot of these look really good and they are definitely worth highlighting. So I do recommend you go ahead and check all these out. On the actual announcement, you can see previews of all of them as well with links to go ahead and download them for uh, whatever distribution you happen to be on. So just something worth checking out. This is a Christmas tree, so we're gonna keep that for the duration or the remainder duration of this video. And of course, we just have some general system improvements. I'm gonna go ahead and throw open NeoFetch real quick. Ooh, Linux Mint already ships with NeoFetch, that's nice. They're running the 5.4 kernel I'm looking at it, that is correct, I'm not saying it wrong this time. And when it comes to general updates, uh, Flatpak is now on version 1.2 as the Linux firmware 1.1.87. Cinnamon is on version 5.2 and this is using the LTS version of Ubuntu, so the 20.04 release. And of course, this version of Linux Mint is going to be getting security updates until the year 2025. So. That has been the new improvements in Linux Mint. Overall, Linux Mint, if you're wanting a traditional desktop and you want that Ubuntu base, this is probably the best thing to go with. It has been tried and true for a number of years. I used it way back, way back. 
even if you go into like old channel videos from like 2012 or 2013 you can see i'd be playing like minecraft and linux mint a big thank you to our youtube members and patreon supporters you guys are awesome and big thank you to Linode for sponsoring this video. Again, if you use the link in the description, you get that $100 60 day credit, free money. You might as well. Uh, with that, I do hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. By the time you're watching this, this might be on official release. It's currently on beta, but we will be linking down below to both the release notes and the Linux Mint website. So you can go ahead and check up on the progress of that. Again, have an absolutely beautiful day. And goodbye.